Welcome to Story Hour with the Owen McKiernan Library at the Virtual Celtic Junction Art Center. Today's story from the Keeper of the Crock of Gold, which is all about Irish leprechaun tales, is Connor McHugh and the Leprechaun, a short and sweet one today. One fine evening in June, when the moon was shining brightly, Connor McHugh was heading home after the fair at Sponsil Hill. As he passed along the country road, he heard a shriek coming from across the bog. Brave man that he was, Connor thought he would investigate, so he hopped over the wall and walked across the bog. By the light of the moon, he could see the hundreds of blackthorn bushes that were growing there, and he was able to avoid all the thorns that could catch him. Eventually, he came to the bush from where the sound was coming. There he saw a little small man hanging by the seat of his breeches from one of the thorns on the blackthorn bush. Right underneath the little man, Connor could see a little hammer and stool and some little shoes, so he knew it was a leprechaun he had found. The little man was screeching for Connor to set him free. How did you get yourself into this predicament, my good man? asked Connor. That doesn't matter at all, said the leprechaun, but I want you to set me free and to do it very carefully because these are a new pair of breeches and I don't want them damaged. Connor very carefully lifted the little man from the bush, and he was thinking to himself that this would be the making of his fortune. You'll have to give me your pot of gold now, he demanded of the little fellow. Of course, the leprechaun wasn't very willing to give it up, and a lot of blathering went on between the two of them until finally the leprechaun realized that Connor wasn't going to release him until he gave the pot of gold. Right so, he said. Carry me across the bog there, and I'll lead you to the spot where me gold is buried. Connor did as he told, and finally in the middle of all the blackthorn bushes, the leprechaun told him to stop. My gold is buried beneath this bush, says the leprechaun. Connor looked about him under the starlight at all the blackthorn bushes on the bog, and he shook his head with great hopelessness. I've no spade at all to dig it with, said he, and if I go home for it, how will I find what bush it is when I come back? That's a trouble all your own, said the small fairy man. After that, a great silence fell between them. It was Connor himself that broke it. I have the answer, he said, sending up a great shout. I'll tie my handkerchief to the bush, and even by the starlight, as dark as it is, I'll be able to tell which bush holds the crock of gold. The fairy man set up a great laugh. Tie up your handkerchief fast now and let us both be going our way. First, I want you to promise, says Connor, that you will not untie this handkerchief from this bush. I promise, laughed the leprechaun. Connor released him. Swish, like a shooting star in the night, the leprechaun vanished. Connor took his brightly colored handkerchief out of his pocket and tied it fast to the blackthorn bush, and then he set off for home. It took him the rest of the night to reach his little cottage, but he found himself quickly a strong spade and made his, made his way back to the bog. The bright orange of the new day was lighting up the sky as Connor arrived at the bog. A strange sight greeted him. To his great astonishment, he discovered that every blackthorn bush in the bog now held its own brightly colored handkerchief, just the same as the one he had tied to the blackthorn bush. Oh, Connor knew then that the leprechaun had outsmarted him, and if he lived to be a hundred years old, he could not dig under each and every one of those bushes. So that was the end of Connor McHugh's fortune, before it had even begun. The end.